Dear participants, it's my pleasure to present to you the second session in the student assignment titled Formulating Clinical Question. By the end of this session, we will be able to summarize the steps of practicing evidence-based medicine, identify types of clinical questions, formulate different types of foreground questions, which called PICO. Let us start with the first objective, which is summarize the steps of practicing evidence-based medicine. During any clinical encounter, the patient visits the physician to get the best available answer to his or her medical problem. The question is, how could this physician give the patient the best available answer to his or her problem. This can be achieved by following the steps of evidence-based medicine. These steps started with assessing the patient by proper history taking and thorough examination and collecting the data from history and examination. Then, the physician should formulate the clinical question, then search for the best evidence to answer the question. After getting the answer for the clinical question, the physician starts to apply the evidence to the patient care. And these are the steps of evidence-based medicine. Now, let us move to our second objective, which is identify types of clinical questions. Clinical questions are two types, either background question or foreground question. The background question, it is subject focus, its aim is to fill the doctor's knowledge gap. However, the foreground question is patient-focused. Its answer is needed to solve the patient's problem. Let us take some examples for the background question. As we said, they are subject-focused, they are needed if the physician want to fill their knowledge gap. Examples for that, like, what are the causes of childhood bleeding? What are the symptoms of heart failure? How to diagnose nephrotic syndrome? Please recognize they are subject-focused and not related to any patient. However, if we move to the foreground question, it is patient-focused. Its answer is needed to solve the patient problem. It has four components called PICO. The PICO stand for P for patient and population, I for intervention, C for comparison, O for outcome. This is PICO structure. The patient visit the physician asking for any of these four domains. Either he is asking for therapy or prevention, diagnosis, prognosis, or harm. And because the foreground question, which is called PICO, are related to the patient need, so the PICO has four domains. They are, again, therapy prevention, diagnosis, prognosis, harm. 
they are related to the patient and their needs. Let us move to our third objective, which is formulate different types of foreground questions called PICO. This is our first scenario. Eight weeks old boy is brought for his first set immunization, which is DBT and oral polio vaccine. The mother asked, is the acellular pertussis vaccine better for her son? What are the foreground questions in this scenario? If we read the scenario again, we will find that the mother asked, is the acellular pertussis vaccine better for her son? So this PICO is PICO therapy. Let us formulate PICO therapy. To formulate our PICO therapy, we should describe our patient, which is eight week old boy, and we should describe our intervention, which here in this scenario, whole cell pertussis vaccine, and identify the comparison, which is acellular pertussis vaccine. Here, the outcome needed by the mother is something better for her son, which can be better immune response and or less risk of convulsion so we can select any or both of them. Better immune response and or less risk of convulsion. So the BICO question in this scenario is, in eight weeks old boy, does the whole cell pertussis vaccine result in better immune response than the acellular pertussis vaccine? And this is BICO therapy in this scenario. Please note, the whole cell pertussis vaccine does not state it in the scenario. You got this information or this knowledge from your background knowledge. So fill your knowledge gap first before formulating the PICO question. You may use some of the background knowledge in formulating the PICO question. Now, let us move to our second scenario. Eight weeks old boy is brought for his first set immunization, which is DBT and oral polio vaccine. The mother heel is concerned that her baby may be at greater risk of convulsion after his immunization. What are the BICO or the foreground questions in this, in, this, in this scenario? If we read this scenario again, we will find that the mother is concerned that her baby may be at greater risk of convulsion after the vaccine. So this BICO is BICO harm. Let us formulate the BICO harm. To formulate the BICO harm in this scenario, we should identify the population, eight weeks old boy, and the intervention here is the whole cell pertussis vaccine. There is no comparison, but the outcome needed by the mother is to avoid the risk of convulsion. So the harm we want to avoid is the risk of, con risk of convulsion. If we want to formulate this PICO harm, it will be in eight weeks old boy, what is the risk of convulsion after the whole cell pertussis vaccine? Please note, in bico harm, there is no stated comparison. And despite that, it is called pico. Let us move to another scenario. A four years old male presented to the ER with purpura, mild gum bleeding. The patient is clinically stable and his physical examination is otherwise normal. Complete blood count is totally normal apart from thrombocytopenia. The platelet count was less than 10,000 per cubic millimeter. 
You diagnose this child as having ITB. ITB means idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. The mother asked how to be sure about the diagnosis. What are the foreground questions or PICO in this scenario? If we read the scenario again, we will find that the mother asked how to be sure about the diagnosis. So this is PICO diagnosis. Let us formulate the PICO. To formulate PICO diagnosis, we should identify our patient, and in this scenario, our patient is four years old boy with purpura, bleeding gum, and thrombocytopenia. And we should identify the intervention, and here our intervention is diagnostic tool, which is complete blood count. And the comparison, despite it's not stated in the scenario, but I should put a comparison from my background question, background knowledge, and from my background knowledge, the comparison may be bone marrow aspirate. And definitely the outcome needed here is accurate diagnosis of for idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. So this PICO diagnosis can be formulated as in four years old boy with purpura bleeding gum is the complete blood count as accurate as the bone marrow aspirate to diagnose ITB? Please note again, the bone marrow aspirate does not state it in the scenario. You got this from your background knowledge. So please fill your knowledge gap first before formulating PICO because you may use some of your background knowledge in formulation of your PICO. Here in this scenario, another scenario, a four years old male presented to the ER with purpura, mild gum bleeding, the patient is clinically stable and his physical examination is otherwise normal. Complete blood count is totally normal apart from thrombocytopenia. The platelet count was less than 10,000 per cubic millimeter. You diagnose the child as having idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. But here we do have another question. The mother is, is worried about the occurrence of intracranial bleeding. So if we read the scenario, we can find another foreground question. So what are the foreground question in this scenario? By reading the scenario again, we can find that the mother is worried about the occurrence of intracranial bleeding. So this is Pico prognosis. Let us formulate Pico prognosis. To formulate Pico prognosis as previous Pico, we describe our patient, and here our patient is four years old boy with purpura, bleeding gum, and thrombocytopenia. And here there is no intervention, there is no comparison, and the mother only worried about the occurrence of intracranial bleeding. She is worried about this risk. So it is bicoprognosis, and there is no intervention and the comparison. And if we stated the question, we can say, in four years old boy, with purpura and bleeding gum, diagnosed as ITB, what is the risk of intracranial bleeding? Please note, in bicoprognosis, there is no stated intervention and no stated comparison. Despite of that, it is called PICO.
Now we reach the end of the session. Let us summarize what we have learned during this session. We have learned the steps of practicing evidence-based medicine and we identified the types of the clinical question. We formulated different types of foreground question, bycotherapy, bycoprognosis, bycodiagnosis, and bycoharm. Also, we identified the steps of evidence-based medicine, and we follow these steps to give our patient the best available answer for their problems. And during this session, we focused on the first step, which is the formulation of the clinical question. And now we are ready to move to the next step, how to search for the best evidence to answer the question. Thank you.